Okay. Next next game. This was a tragedy of a mockery of a sham, this game. Okay, as you all know, if there was somebody standing here, I would say, that means they don't know. This was one of the big upsets of the first round. You can tell by the players' names that White is a better player. 300 cents of dues. We've been streaming for 38 minutes and we have our first uh, train. Thanks, Pinky Jim. Okay, so this was the big upset of day one was this guy I've never heard of beat Vadim Zvagensev. And Zvagensev has been 2,600 feet a since before you were born. And he's got a really cool name. And he lost the first game. He was black. But, I mean, Harya played a really good game. Really good. Okay. Now, this position, black is completely winning. Black's up in exchange for no pawns. Black has two passed pawns. The pawns on the e-file, there's a rook in front of them that's going to capture them. Black's just winning. And all black needs is a draw to win the match. And he's winning. And the engine says plus three, plus four for black. Okay, and at and, and this point, <clears throat> after Hari, Hari played perfect the first game and then played great this game, now he folded like Superman on laundry day. And it's just, it's nerves and it's, you know, not being used to beating 2,600. That's what it is. Midgard Serpent subscribed. Bishop takes gifted a sub. Now, <clears throat> um, right. Karyakin's chest strength isn't related to whether his dad bought him norms or not. That's, he's as strong as he is. But yeah, the, the fact that you want to be the youngest GM ever and you're doing things that are weird to accomplish that, that's, that's not the point of that. Okay, that's the way life is now. People want to achieve goals that you're supposed to achieve by achieving the goal. You're supposed to just be you, and then if you're you, you achieve goals, maybe the other guy doesn't. But instead, their goal isn't to be themselves, it's to achieve the goal. I want to become the youngest GM ever, so I'm going to play in 20 GM norm tournaments in eight months instead of three. And I'm going to burn out and I'm going to play bad. But if I get three GM norms out of 20, which isn't that good, then I'll be a GM. That's They're trying to get the GM norms. It's weird. It's not, it's, and it's hard to explain to you guys. You guys, you know, you guys voted for Trump probably. 400 cents to do. Thank Pinky Jim. Okay. Now in this position, Black wants to take all of these pawns. And the reason he can't is because this rook isn't defended. So I can't play rook takes because rook takes rook check. I don't want to play rook takes f7 takes, then there's two connected pass pawns plus a third one. So what we need to do with black is make sure this move doesn't win a rook. So the two best moves are rook g8, threatening rook takes e6, and king g8, threatening rook takes e6, and rook takes f7 either wins or draws also. And after that, black is about plus four. White's just dead. Okay, and this is where he started to play badly. Uh, okay, he played bishop f4, which forks the bishop and the pawn. This is a nice example of an x-ray. The bishop is defended by the rook on f8 through the other rook. It's a defense x-ray. You don't see that too often. Okay, this move is really, 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 really bad. And after this move... White is much better. <laughs> so that's like the worst move on the board. The knight, which heretofore was doing Vishwa nothing, <clears throat> played knife f5. And now white's doing great. Now obviously, from, from black's point of view, when he, when he played bishop f4, he knew that white would save his knight somehow and he would take the pawn on e5. Otherwise, you, you wouldn't do that. And he did take the pawn on e5. That's why he played bishop f4. Okay, and he overlooked the strength of the white knight coming to g6. And there's two ways to do it. Okay, and he chose one of them. And knight g6 is unstoppable, you know, unless you sack the exchange on e7, which hangs mate in one to rook takes f8 mate. And, and now black is losing. So black was like plus four, and now white's winning. So it was, it was pretty quick. He, he wanted to win that e5 pawn, and he let the white knight get in there, and the e6 pawn was much more important. Once you win the e6 pawn, 
the e5 pawn is going to fall. Now you win the e5 pawn, the e6 pawn is there forever. We can defend it with a white squared bishop. We're blocking the rook. Knight g6 check is crushing. Bishop takes e5 makes knight g6 check stronger because it's another piece hanging after knight g6. Thanks, Water Dragon 888. Yeah. The, the, the point is, chess is difficult. And I know you guys like streamers and you guys like famous people who aren't very good yet. So you guys ask things like, man, I know Nemo's going to do well because she streams. And then you're like, is Ben better than Tani? Okay. Now, I'm not better than Tari, but I am better than Tani. Okay. So you guys are easily confused. Like, if you've heard of somebody, you think they're good. And I'll give you a funny example. Story time with Ben Feingold, recommended by Yes or Sarawan. Gregory Serper, from your favorite country, Uzbekistan, he's lived in the U.S. for 30 years. When he first came here, he was in New York City, and he was playing in a round robin. And the round robin had, like, I don't know, four GMs and five IMs, something like that. And he was talking to a random person he knew in New York. Not a chess, not a, I mean, new, new chess, but wasn't like a professional player. You know, some guy plays chess. And he said, who's playing in the tournament? And he says, well, he says, I, I beat Victor Korshnoi. And the guy's like, you know what? Victor Korshnoi. And then Serper's like, and I, I drew with Alex Yermolinsky. And the guy's like, what? And he says, and I beat Josh Waitzkin. And they're like, you're playing in a tournament with Josh Waitzkin? This is a true story. Serper's telling me this story. Josh Waitzkin, you know, is of average talent and he became an IM and he was never going to become a GM. And he's famous because his dad wrote a book and they made a movie out of it. You know, Josh Waitzkin was never going to become a GM. You know, he's all right, but he, he's famous. So people think Josh Waitzkin is great. People, some people might even think Bruce Pandolfini is great. Bruce Banolfini's 2200 on a good day, and it's usually not a good day. So, you know, people who are good are really high rated and playing for the World Championship and playing in the Candidates Tournament. And people that are famous that you've heard of, you know, like they can't compete with the best players in the world. So it's very disappointing when you haven't heard of somebody and they easily beat the people you have heard of. Like, you know, Andrew Tang is gone, Nemo is gone. Basically, anybody that you like who streams is gone. And uh, Nemo, um, she, she played um, she played Prognanha's sister, who's very good. Prognanha's sister is good. So, I mean, she just got crushed both games. Prognanha's sister is good. Yeah. Truth hurts. Um, yeah. So because you've heard of somebody or you think they're famous, that doesn't matter as much as their rating. If you look at two ratings and this one's higher, they're probably going to win the match. Even if you haven't heard of them, you've heard of the other one. The, the person Andrew Tang lost to, none of you have heard of him. None of you. I've heard of him, but barely. I can't remember his name. I've heard of Andrew Tang. You know, what are you going to do? I've heard his Vagensev, so he won. Okay, so now Black is lost because he let that knight get to g6. Bishop d6 is the engine move. Check. King g8, obviously. King h7 walks into double, triple, quadruple checkmate. Now, rook d7 isn't the best move, and that actually allows a draw. He should have played bishop d5. Bishop d5 is the best move. Obviously, and frankly, he was probably, like, in the end of time trouble here. It's move 37. Okay. And now black blundered the game away. Um, this move actually lets black draw rook d7, but black didn't find it. And then he wins the match if he draws. Um, since his rook is hanging and his bishop is hanging, he should play rook f1 check. King obviously goes to g2. And then he should play rook e1. Now we're attacking. The bishops are both attacked, but my rook is super active. And the engine just says this is a draw. They're just a draw. Because I, I can always sack the exchange for this, then I'm probably better. And these are two passed pawns, and the rook is active, and everything's fine. And he didn't do that. He blundered with bishop c5. Always blunder. e7, exclamation mark. And white's winning again. Just winning. 
yeah, we don't have time to play uh, rook rook f1 e1 because rook e, rook here is winning after king here bishop here check. Yeah, it's just winning. So he has to take, and um, White's technique was reasonable. Two pieces for a rook, and he won the piece up endgame. This is cool, c6, c7. You can't take this pawn because of knight e6 check, fork in the king and rook. And now White's threatening the queen because the knight e7 check wins the rook. Yeah, pretty cool. Then you, you still can't play. Uh, this is actually funny. If you take this and then I check you and you attack my rook, taking your rook defends my rook. So, man, the, the guy's really unlucky. Truth hurts. Yeah, and then he resigned. Now they're going to have a playoff tomorrow. Psychologically, not good for Ravi. He won the first game very nicely. He's winning the second game for a long time. He blunders. Then the guy blunders back and he's drawing and then he loses. So he was given a lot of chances to win this match. And now that he lost, psychologically, he's very unhappy. And his opponent's like, yay, I'm playing a playoff. I thought the match was over. And, you know, Zvagensev is higher rated. So he's got more than one edge. So that's too bad for Ravi. That could've, he could have been a hero. Truth hurts. Um... Yeah, that is funny that the World Cup's going on and Hikaru's playing Title Tuesday. 